Hello. Welcome again, everyone. My name is Kimberly Matenchik. I'm the Managing Director for Programmable Media here at Cloudinary, and it's my pleasure to introduce Nish Patel. He's the Web, um, web Development Manager at Paul Smith. Please have a seat. So maybe we can just start off with some of the basics. Although most people will know who Paul Smith is as a brand, um, maybe just give us a quick overview for anybody who's not necessarily living in the UK. Okay, uh, well, hello everyone. Um, Paul Smith is a British designer brand, um, global, um, has about around 130 stores worldwide. Um, it's an independent global brand. Um, not controlled by anyone. We have customers, we well serve to B2B customers, business to business and business to consumer. Um, we've got an well, online website as well, both for B2B and B2C as well. And yeah. Fabulous. Now, just like everyone experienced in COVID, there were quite a lot of changes that Paul Smith experienced as well. Can you maybe talk us through some of those big changes and maybe what the situation was before COVID and then where you've evolved to after COVID? Sure. So before COVID, obviously, retail was doing really well. Um, and what happened during COVID, obviously, everyone knows that shops were closed. Mm. Uh, we initially uh, switched the website off. Well sort of not selling any products because warehouses were closed, etc. But three weeks into it, we found that everyone else is selling online, so we should turn the <laughs> website on. Absolutely. Uh, we found that basically web sales really got us through COVID, basically. Well, our B2B platform and B2C platform, and a lot of people were shopping online, basically, clicking through images, media, you know, and all that. So, yeah. That's what happened and we decided to, obviously, um, we're using Magento, so we're, we were originally a monolith, using a monolith architecture, basically. So we've now moved into a, the headless yeah. sort of space. Maybe can you tell us a little bit about that too, because as you evolved through COVID and more people are clicking on your website, you guys have evolved your tech stack as well. Correct. So what is that looking like now? Uh, so the tech stack now we have um, basically cloud. Well, Cloudinary was originally with us, um, and the good thing about Cloudinary was we could move it along with our current tech stack. Uh, for content management, we're using Storyblock. Mm -hmm. um, we have a Magento backend that sort of drives our products and catalogs, etc. And Clevu, which is sort of like a merchandising tool, and we're well, when you search on our website, Cleave does all the sort of smart searching, basically. So, you know, synonyms, etc. cetera. Um, pretty powerful combination that we see because what we want is results, basically. You know, people to search sale or stripes, for instance, and it comes up with basically an automated way of the products that are selling the most at the top, basically. Yeah. And with Cloudinary, what are the main things that you're using us for within your tech stack? Uh, well, mainly for images and videos. Um, we also d do some sort of showcasing. So we're using collections, etc., which mm -hmm. we'll come to later. But basically, um, we have franchises, customers that could be John Lewis, etc., that want to have our images, but we don't want everyone to have our images, if that sort of makes sense. So, so you we, want some to have some and others to have others. Exactly. So we sort of use Cloudinary collections for basically picking and choosing what they can see and um, give them those collections basically to share in a URL, basically. Here you go. There's all the images that you can see and they can pick and choose which images to use on their websites, etc., or catalogs. Okay, and what about APIs? Can you talk to us a little bit about what you guys are using from an API perspective? Um, so from the API perspective, it's pretty vast, I'd say. Um, so we've got basically on in Magento itself, uh, we use APIs for, for instance, if I could start the journey, um, we use your webhooks initially to have images, because we're using one cloud to serve two websites, basically. Mm -hmm. We sort of split the APIs up to serve our B2B site and B2C site. 
and we've come up with our own way of serving it to a middleware, which then sort of finds out using the image path because that's how we tend to sort of um, tell which images belong to which product, if that sort of makes sense. And that goes with videos as well. Yeah. And just behind you, we've got Sam, who's actually just showing the website right now. Um, and so anything that you want to call out specifically here? Um, a few great things happening. Yep, yeah, so we're using um, images basically from Cloudinary, which how we are storing them is in Magento, but we're using source set. So what we do is we check the viewport and then dynamically load images and where we have W auto, what we tend to do is automatically transfer it, transform it to a certain width, basically, um, using C scale and width of 600, basically. We also pass the quality in at this point as well, which is pretty powerful because the quality aspect of it, it's a big nightmare when you've got your photography team and you've got people basically wanting the best quality images and what we want to do as developers is basically serve the most optimized stream of that image, basically. Um, so it's, that's how we tend to use the API, Cloudinary's API. But I mean, that's just for images, right? So there's, there's more where you can delete images mm -hmm. from, which we tend to do from Magento. Um, we can create images on the fly as well and fetch images which automatically pre-populate the product pages. Absolutely. And I think we've got the repo up now as well, haven't we? So, yep, this is um, the repository which basically we've created. Um, we're using Magento, but I mean, the APIs could be used in any sort of language. It could be JavaScript, Node, etc. But I mean, it's totally flexible. So what we've done with um, our own repo is basically tell our middleware lets Magento's know what's go what images to upload, basically. And it sends a message across over. Um, let's just say, for instance, a product doesn't exist, but we've got the image already. So photography, I've already done their images. And we upload to Cloudinary, and it sends a notification to Magento. Obviously, the product's not there. What we do is store it into a database, and when the product does come available, it automatically uploads it to that product, basically, when we create the, import the product. So, I mean, there's a lot of flexibility with the APIs and how we're using it. I mean, rather, we, we found that basically working with Cloudinary and just transforming images or using business logic, well, not business logic, but basically algorithms positioning. So we've got a thing where in the image path would have underscore position of 10, underscore 20, underscore 30, 10 being the first image to show. So that's how we're sort of positioning it on our website. Um, so yeah, Cloudinary gives great flexibility for positioning, I guess, um, as well as the quality aspect of it and the width, obviously, which is a great bonus. Fantastic. And you are also using assets, aren't you? Yes, that's right. right. And, and just a reminder, um, it's our digital ad, uh, asset manager that's been rebranded over to assets. And so maybe you can talk us a little bit through that as well. Yeah, so we are using Cloud Near Assets uh, for sharing with, obviously, our B2B customers um, across the board. Um, we are using tagging mm -hmm. as well, tags. So what we find is how we do the tagging mm -hmm. is basically we have an automated process where we drop images into folders. And when we're uploading using Cloudinary's API, what we tend to do is break the SKUs up, basically. If it's, we tend to put in seasons as well. So if it's autumn, winter 23 or summer, spring, summer, we sort of add that meta tags in. And basically what that would do is just whilst we're uploading the images, we're tagging them so then people can find them using using um, the UI, Cloudinary's UI, search for tags or use them for collections, basically. Yeah. 
And does that structure change at all for mobile and web, or is it just no. season or just collection? Just se seasonal and collection and SKUs, basically. So we break down the SKUs as well so that we can find, for example, M1R for us is men's basically ready to wear. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're using business, business to understand what collect, where we can group images together as well, basically using, using tags. How have you set up permissions and roles to make sure that people can actually access what they need to access? So we've got several rules, basically. Um, I think the admins obviously clearly got access to everything, but basically we've got certain people that can't access certain clouds. So we have got various clouds and we sort of restrict people to actually delete media, for instance, in some mm -hmm. cases. Um, collections, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they can't delete. They can only see the collections, but can't share. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, so yeah. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> so yeah, we, we've got various rules which we share across various business, but we know that nothing rogue is going to happen. No one's going to delete a whole bunch of images. I don't think you can anyway. So I'm better to sure. be safe than sorry. Okay. Yeah, fabulous. Um, we also have Scott here from Storyblock, and you guys work quite closely with Storyblock as well, and they're an integrated part of your, your tech stack. Yes. Do you want to maybe talk to us a little bit about that? Uh, so we approach many CMS companies, of headless CMS companies, and Storyblock were one of the companies that basically had an integration with Cloudinary which is a positive because cloud is not going anywhere. I mean, we've got thousands of millions of images in cloud. <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a pain to move all of it. Happy so, to hear it. So um, Storyblock came about and um, yeah, they had the integration, which what we use Storyblock and Cloudinary for. So we've got our own cloud called Storyblock. So obviously the product enrichment basically happens in just that cloud. So we're not mixing any sort of catalog product imagery, we keep that separate. Um, and it helps us to basically uh, enrich all the product information, drives all our CMS pages, um, and all the images are served from Cloudinary. So yeah, it's perfect. Sounds like you're getting quite a lot of flexibility in there to make sure that you're getting what you need. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Okay. Um, now, I'm sure it's something that everyone has also been wanting to know about, but maybe we can just mock is a, a big buzzword that's come up in a big term. Is this part of your composable structure as well? Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's, I, I'm sure Scott will maybe talk a little bit more about this through the panel, but maybe we can also just touch on outcomes because it's great to have a, a composable structure that works and the flexibility to fit your business needs. Can you maybe talk to us a little bit about how the structure that you do have is meeting those outcomes and those needs that you've got. What have you guys found so far? Um, well, we found that basically we've got a bit more flexibility, well, a lot more flexibility <laughs> with, with the design. Um, being macro composable sort of gives you a canvas to work with, a bunch of APIs, which you can sort of do a lot of powerful things with, you know, content stitch, you can have images, videos, wherever you want. You know, there's no sort of restriction in design or sort of, um, there's no sort of, um, we've got a lot of flexibility where we can actually deliver powerful content. And I think one of the things that we're finding is videos are working really well for us at the moment. And um, we're seeing like a lot of um, people engaging with, videos on our site, you know, on our category pages and everything else where, you know, that sort of has an impact on bounce rates where bounce rates are reducing a bit more conversions on the products, you know, people are being engaged with enriched data. Um, but using um, Cloudinary Storyblock, um, obviously Magento, not so much Magento about enriching the data, but, you know, just having those sort of um, videos and images which are delivered out a very um, optimized way um, sort of has had a big impact on the site, um, where we were to now, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, because Paul Smith has commented that even just using the product videos has, 
has increased sales in those particular areas by 45 percent. That's Correct. quite a return for, for something that you've, you've moved from testing out to really implementing. Absolutely. Do you want to touch a little bit on the maybe the asset management as well, just in terms of time saved or, or what you're noticing in terms of your internal workflows? Uh, so originally, we the photographers would take the pictures, it would go in, into a shared drive, etc. you know, um, manually uploading images takes forever, you know. We f are finding that we can share um, throughout the business a lot of media within reason, you know, various departments can actually access imagery quite well. We've got a single repository, you know, basically just here's a cloud, log into Cloudinary, search for the image, and it's there, basically. And we've got a lot of, well, we've moved all our archive products, imageries, and what we've had historically all into Cloudinary, and just a powerful way of having collections of our older images, etc., that people want throughout the business. Um, workflows, yeah, time saving, absolutely. Um, I think we can easily upload images to Cloudinary um, through various ways. But for instance, for our B2B site, I think we have something in the region of 5,000 to 10,000 product images that go upstream. And we found a way to automate that where we put, it, put those images into various subfolders into a Microsoft share drive and we just hit a command and it will just automat automate itself to just upload into Cloudinary, creating those various folders, send the notifications, and then that would reach our B2B site automatically without anyone intervening. So, yeah. Easy to use and going in the right spot, yeah. saving you guys time and money. Exactly. Fabulous. Yeah.